Hi, this is Chef Allen from Global Sugar Art, and today I'd like to show you how to make drapes and jabots. Jabots and drapes can be used on any size cake, and today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern for whatever size tier you're working on so you can get exact, precise uh, drapes that, that flow evenly around the cake and are all the same size. So let's get started. I have a cake here already started. Now this is a 10 inch uh, layer cake and it's five inches high. Now you can, you can work this out with any size cake that you want. I just chose this because five inches is a nice height to really get a nice uh, looking drape. The first thing you want to do is divide your cake by the number of drape pieces that you'd like. I've decided that I wanted to do this in four. So if you have a marker where you can just set the cake down and mark off the four spots, that's great. If you don't, all you have to do is take a tape measure, go around the cake, measure the full circumference, and then divide it by four, and then make a mark. So I've already made my four marks um, so that this is equally divided into four. It's important that you not only know where the four marks are, but that you know where the middle is. So what I've done is I've, I've measured from one mark to the other, and when I did that, it came right out, let's see, you can see this, it came right out to about eight inches. So I know that I have eight inches from here to here, so my halfway point is gonna be at four inches. The importance of that, this is a regular triangle um, that you can use um, in, in algebra and in math. I use this to mark not only a straight up and down line on the cake, but I can use it to measure how deep I want the, uh, the drape to be. So I found the middle part and I just measured up as high as I want and so I go four inches in and I went up about three and a half inches and I made a mark. And that will be the lowest point in my drape. Now, this is all sort of technical. You don't have to do that. But if you want a really perfect look, it really helps to measure everything ahead of time. So I want to show you a quick trick to making a pattern. I know I have eight inches from point A to point B. So I'm taking an eight inch cake circle. My cake is 10 inches, so I'm taking a 10 inch cake circle. And here's where the magic comes in. I'm gonna take this eight inch circle and put it over a white piece of paper, and I'm just gonna draw a half circle. Now I'm gonna take the 10 inch, and I'm gonna go from point A to point B. And I'm just gonna And that gave me a nice scallop. When I cut that out, I get this. So using the eight and the 10, I made a scallop. And then you just put that on the cake from one point to the other. And if you look closely, I've already made little dots. And I've just used, you can use a needle tool or a toothpick you just put that on there. You can actually pin it on your cake with a toothpick and then just make little dots. And that's where I know my line is gonna be. Just make sure that you have equidistant from the middle to the bottom on every single one. And that's your starting point. So the pattern is really, really easy to make. I'll show you how to make the pattern for the jabots too, but let's get going on making the drapes. I'm gonna take a little bit of fondant Now, I like to use just uh, a regular fondant with nothing in it. If you're working with really large drapes, like on this cake, these were a little larger, um, or if you're in hot and humid weather, definitely add a little Tylos, uh, maybe about a half a teaspoon per pound of fondant, or mix 50% gum paste and 50% fondant together. And that will make a little stabler, a more stable um, paste that, will, that won't stretch as much. When you're putting these on a cake, they tend to stretch. 
So if it's hot and humid, it'll stretch a lot. I'm just gonna put this through the pasta machine. Okay, I put this through the pasta machine. Um, mine starts on setting one, not setting zero. Uh, and so I brought it up to a four. So if yours starts on zero, you'd bring it up to about a three. And I'm just putting a little bit of cornstarch. And I'm gonna use a ribbon cutter. This is an FMM ribbon cutter. And I've put the sections together so I get about between one and a half and one and three quarter inches in width. So from here, I'm just gonna cut a couple pieces. We'll cut two pieces. Okay, we'll put one aside. We want to make sure the ends are square. And we're going to take a little bit of water and just put it right down the middle. Now I'm going to flip the top part over and glue this down about three quarters of the way down. The ends are not going to meet. I'm only going to come about three quarters of the way over. Try not to grab it with your fingers because when you do, you're going to scrunch that up. You're going to pinch it and that will show on the cake. So use a, a little palette knife or something to start it. So I'm going to roll this over. Now watch that I'm really gently rolling this over. I'm trying to keep that rounded edge. If you press, you're going to have, uh, you'll no longer have that nice rounded shape on the drape. It'll look like you pinched it. So carefully move it, uh, pull it over, and then just, just touch it together so that it sticks together. I don't use glue, I use water. It'll stick fine. You can use either a knife or a pizza cutter, and on just one side, just start, um, cut a little angle. Okay, now we're gonna put this on the cake. I'm gonna go from this point to this point. So it's best to put a little water on the cake. And I'm going to put it just at that water line, or just at the, the pin line, and down a little bit further. And I'm going to start here. Just going to cover up that line. And then when I get up here, I'm just going to lay that over the top. Just gently press that down. And then you can use a little X-Acto knife and cut off, with, whoops, cut off what you don't need. And what I like to do, because I didn't know how long a piece I was going to need, that's why I only cut that angle on one side. So on this side, I know that my mark is right there. I'm just going to just cut very little bit off so that that scoops down like that. So your first piece is on. And all you do is you repeat the process. I'll show you one more time. A little water halfway down. Use a palette knife or a spatula to start pulling that over. Gently press it together. And I'll show you a little trick. If you're right-handed or left-handed, or if you always cut the, the angle on the same side, your drapes will start looking deeper on one side and shallow on the other. They won't hang nice and uh, rounded like you want them to. So I try to alter. So the first time I cut the angle on the right side, this time I'm cutting it on the left side. That forces me to start my first one on one side, the next one on the other side, the third one on the other side, and you get a more rounded, uh, uh, just a better looking drape. So we're gonna add a little water to the base of that one. And this time we're gonna start up here. And I'm gonna 
cut that off right there. My X-Acto knife. You're going to be covering the center part here with a jabot, so it's okay to have, it doesn't have to be totally clean right there. I do like to make it flush with the top of the cake though. All right, I'm going to get some more paste rolled out and we'll do the third part and we'll do a jabot. So we're going to put the last piece on now and just a little water down the center. Use a palette knife to get that over. Now I didn't mention on the first two, so I just want to make sure I clarify that this folded edge is what goes up against the cake. That's the important part. So I'm going to start on this side this time. Okay, now on the last one, don't put the water too far down because anytime you put water on a cake, on a fondant covered cake, it's going to leave a shiny spot. So try to get the water only where you need it. And that one goes right there. Great, that's exactly what I wanted. Just touch that so that it um, sticks. And then I'm going to, my mark is right there. So I'm going to go right where my, my mark is and I'm just going to cut a little bit out just to round that off. And then just use your hand and make sure that bottom is adhered. Now here's a little trick. If you want to use uh, like a little cell pin, don't use the pointy end. I've learned from experience that it's really hard, it's really easy to make a pinpoint in the drape and you don't want to do that. Use the rounded end and you can actually just put it right in between and you can open those up a little bit if you want. And that's the drape. You can do three, you can do five. I tried to stick to uh, odd numbers. I think they look better. Uh, three on this size cake is a nice size, but you could go five or seven and you can make them short and like a sort of like an opera curtain where they're, they're really close together and the ruffles come way down. There's all different ways you can make the drape. This is just the very basic. Now for the jabots, this is a really simple pattern. I've taken a piece of paper, Arts and Crafts Day, taken a piece of paper and I measured it five inches across. So this piece of paper is five inches across I measured down three inches and I found my middle point and I created a triangle. So I'm going to just cut this out. So now I have a long piece of paper, I've got a little house here. So basically five inches across, the triangle is three inches high. Now how long you make this all depends on the depth of your cake. So for this cake, I want it more than three inches. I probably want that jabot to go way down here. So I'm probably going to go about four, four and a half inches. If I were doing like one of those uh, double tiered cakes that are like six or eight inches, you can just extend this. So that's totally up to you how, how uh, deep you need to make it. So I'm just going to guess this and go about another inch and a half. And I have uh, my fondant all rolled out. This is the same thickness as I did the, um, the drapes. Okay. Now the fun begins. The first thing I'm going to do is put a very little bit of water on both of the straight sides. And I'm just going to make a very, very small um, overlap just so that I have a finished edge. 
It's like putting a little hem on a piece of clothing. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to flip this over. And I'm using five one quarter inch dowel rods. And you can get these. These are often the dowels they use to support cakes. Or you can buy the, uh, the 36 inch lengths at a, at a hardware store. Um, you can also use the quarter inch um, poly dowels. Those work really well as, as well. So place one under and make sure it goes from the center to the point. That's the most important part is you want that point right on the, uh, on the dowel rod. And then just put your fingers over the top and get the fondant to adhere right, right over it. Now add a second one in. You're going to do the same thing. You're trying to make little pleats. And then the third one. So now I have the pleats on that side. The fourth one. And the fifth one. And now you line them all up. Just hang on to it and pull them all out at the same time. Now squeeze this together and the jabba is now ready to put on the cake. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water where I want to attach it. I'm going to lift it up and decide how far down I want it to go. And I'm basically going to press it right into the cake and just tear off what I don't want. And that is how easy it is to make a jabba. It really is very, very easy. And it has a little bit of a dramatic effect. Um, sometimes on, on cakes, depending on what I have on the board, I actually will do a bottom border first if I'm going to do a border at all. And I'll make the jabot long enough so it just sort of lays on the board and then comes up. It's sort of like a piece of fabric flowing down. It looks really nice. You can then finish the top with a flower, a little rosebud. Um, you can use a mold and make like a little um, a brooch or something like that. There's a multitude of things you can do to finish them off. But that's basically the drapes and the jabots. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And you can buy all the supplies at globalsugarart.com. Have a great day.